This video is going to be a tutorial on how to use the Insta360 desktop software. If you're thinking about getting an X5 or X4 or X3 and you want to know what's involved in rendering 360 video, this video is for you. If you already have one of those cameras and you want to know how to use the desktop software, this video is for you as well. I'll show you how to render individual clips and I'll show you how to use the project feature to put together multiple clips from the cameras and other cameras as well. I'll keep this fairly basic and I do recommend, by the way, using the desktop software over the phone version if you can. It's just much more feature rich, so let's go. The first thing that I'll mention is you can just hook up a USB-C cable to the camera, power it on, and then select USB drive from the camera, hook the other USB end up to your computer. And so I have it named as X5. Uh, you're gonna find the files under DCIM, camera, and then the 360 videos are gonna start with VID, so vid, and they're gonna have this extension of INSV. And then by the way, if you used the single lens mode of the camera, those, those are gonna be MP4 files. You can edit both of those in the 360 software. So all you're gonna do is copy these and put them in whatever folder you want. Once I have the Insta360 Studio app open, I'll tap on Open Files. And what I do is when I have a project, I will make folders. Uh, for example, I'll go to Movies, YouTube, this is kind of my workflow here, Source Files, and then I have this camping vlog that I did. So I put a 360 folder, that way I can keep those files separate from the ones that I render out of it. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So I'm gonna double tap there, and I'm gonna open a couple files here. So let's open three of them. Okay, now I've got them in the, the player here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just frame it like I want it. And the magic button is the one down here. This is where you add a keyframe. So, um, and this line right here is where you're at in the clip. Okay, so this is the beginning marker. This is the end marker. So let's say I wanted to, first of all, you know, trim this clip. There's two ways I can do it. One is I can just click here and move it where I want it. Or when I'm playing it, uh, let's say I start it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here to start that trim. So I've trimmed it and I can do the same thing, of course, on this side by clicking this uh, button to, to trim it on the other side, or I can just drag. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to show you is deep tracking. And I don't use this a whole lot because I just reframe it exactly like I want it, but this would be really useful for those of you who want to track a subject and what you do is you click on this button right here you can mouse over it just hover over it. it'll say deep track and then once you click on it, it you're going to kind of highlight your subject you start to the left of the subject and then and then drag so i'm going to track my buddy here he's kind of small in the video so we'll see if this works and you click on start tracking and you'll see the box just stays around him and that's so cool that is really cool. And it'll just it'll just keep tracking him. And then basically th that's it. I mean, that's all I have to do for this clip if I just wanted to follow someone. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna do is show you how you would just reframe a clip. And this is what I do most often. I'm gonna bring up this clip. And then you'll see like this is just, it's a little bit too wide for me. I want to come in a little bit. So what the first thing that I'm going to do is tap on this keyframe. Okay. When I do that, it's going to give me options. I can go to like, you know, crystal ball, tiny planet, which I don't use any of those. And then this is, these are the ones that you'll want to start using. So mega is very wide. So you basically you're going from the widest to the narrowest as you move to the right. And then of course, linear is going to be the, the most narrow. And so ultra is a little bit tighter. Uh, D-warp is nice because it gets rid of the warping on the sides, but it's still very wide. And then linear, and that's going to be the most narrow. So I'm going to do D-warp. Now, even though it, it's, it's zoomed in, I can zoom in even more. So I'm going to, going to use my mouse and just zoom in a little bit. So you can zoom in or out manually. So the, the ones that I just showed you are, you know, set it to, to, to a certain way. And then, and then you're gonna you know, zoom in or out manually. So I can go <laughs> way out, like a tunnel. 
Okay, so I'm going to get it kind of to where I want it. And then I'm going to, I'm basically what I'm doing is I'm clicking the mouse or the trackpad in this case, and I'm just dragging. So I click, hold, and then I just move it all around. And this is how you can just set all kind of different views. But the keyframes are important. So the keyframes are vital in this. <laughs> and I'll, I'll explain it here in a minute. So I'm going to get it to where I can see some of the bike. And then I'm going to play. All right, we are on no -tail trail. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set another keyframe. I like setting keyframes throughout because it kind of holds it. And that way when you start to move, it will it will kind of lock in. And you'll see what I mean. So let's let's set a keyframe here. And then let's just keep going. And now let's say I want to start panning over to the side. But I, I don't want the pan to start yet. So I'm going to set another keyframe. And then I'm going to go a little bit more. And then I'm going to set a keyframe. You can either pan it and then set the keyframe or set the keyframe and then pan it. Let's set the keyframe and then pan it. So let's say I just want to show something on the side. Now the video is over on the side. And now let's say I want to start panning back. I'm going to set another keyframe. So what, what I don't want it to do is I don't want it to start panning too soon or like do, just do this continual pan. So I want to kind of hold it. That's why I set that other keyframe. That last pan I just want it to hold and then we're going to pan back over and set a keyframe. Okay, and let me show you what that looks like. So let's drag this back. I'm just clicking and dragging this little bar that shows me where, where I'm at on the timeline. So you see it holds this one. Now it's going to start panning over to the side. It's going to hold it. It's going to keep holding it and then it'll start panning back to the front. And so that's and what the keyframe does is it basically just smoothly pans like it doesn't just jump like it just it, like if you set one. So let's do one more. Let's drag a little bit more in this. Uh, let's say I'm just kind of keeping it uh, in the front for a while. Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pan over. Let's say I want to pan down. OK, so I'm going to set another keyframe first so that it will hold what I just did. And then I'm going to play. And then I'm going to pan down and set another keyframe. And then let's see what that looks like. So we were filming in the front. And now it's going to smoothly start panning down where I set that other keyframe. And then I want to hold that for a little bit. So I'm going to set another keyframe. And then we're going to pan up. And again, I'll show you what that looks like. So this is just the basics, right? This is just how you do different views and different, you know, angles and whatnot. So that's basically how it works. And then what, what you do is you're going to export it. And this is very easy. Let me, let me show you a few things about editing the clips. So uh, you can, Let's see, there it is, the adjust button. So if you wanted to adjust exposure and things like that, if you didn't have a dedicated software like DaVinci Resolve that I use, you can actually adjust all of your exposure and things here. So I want to make that brighter or darker. I usually shoot like minus 0.7 EV comp when I'm using the camera in the bright daylight. I can adjust the highlights, uh, shadows, you can just make the image look better. Uh, contrast, which does highlights and shadows at the same time. Brightness, black point, saturation. That's one I like to use sometimes. If it's oversaturated or undersaturated, you can make it black and white. <laughs> or you can make it really bright color. And then vibrance, it's similar to saturation. And then um, you know, if you're used to editing photos on a phone, you, you know what all these do. And then definition, just make it real sharp looking. Okay, now we're ready to export. I'm not going to really go over a bunch of other stuff because I want to just keep this basic and allow you to uh, to really see kind of just how to get a clip out and start using it. Some of these other, you know, I don't really use that much. So I'm not really going to show it. I really just reframe it, maybe adjust it. And then I'm going to export this clip. And then first of all, you want to name it. So we'll just so this downhill. And then this is where you set your, your path. I'm not going to really... Uh, do that now and then bitrate like it it defaults to 50 so I usually go a little bit higher maybe go up to 100 and you can see at the bottom here it's telling you how big your file size is so if I go like 
200 bit rate, I'm at a gig. If I go like 50, 20, it's, I'm at 103 megabytes. So it's drastically changing the file size. Now resolution, this is 4K because I shot this in 8K. If I shot the video in 5.7K, this would be 1080p. And then your frame rates kind of default. And then I usually render in H.264. Um, when I do my final renderings for YouTube, by the way, I do H.265. And then you just start export. Now you see you can export a 360 video. Um, I don't really do that. I just export a flat video. And then once I click on start export, um, you can see up here, it'll kind of tell you when it's done. I can click on this and it'll show me the progress. So the nice thing though is I can keep working on other clips as this is exporting. So I can close this box. And if I wanted to open another clip and start editing this one, I could as the other one's exporting, which is really nice. Uh, you don't have to sit there and wait for it to export. So I can just, you know, again, it's, it's, it takes, so that clip, you know, it, it takes a while because it's a higher bit rate and, you know, for a clip like that, that was maybe like a one minute clip. It would take about a minute is what I've noticed. The other thing that I want to show you is if you wanted to use Insta360 as a complete video editor and put together tracks and then render a whole movie. I don't do it because I like layering my clips, but let's, let's go to project. Uh, okay. New project. First thing it, it wants me to, um, you know, find the path where I want to save this project. And so that's fine. I just, the default's fine. It's the Insta360 folder. Uh, and then it wants me to title it. So I'll just do test project. And then uh, I want it to be a 16, 16 by nine. That's the wide video format. If you wanted to do a nine by 16, you could like, you know, for a Instagram or whatever, YouTube short, you could do nine by 16. I'm going to leave it on 16 by nine, confirm. Now, all I have to do here is drag in my clips. Now you can do all of that reframing from here if you wanted to. Okay, I'm going to bring in this clip. I want it here. And then I'm going to bring in another clip. Oh, you see the green? That means it was deep tracking. And then let's bring in this one. And then this is the one that we were just working on. Now you'll see all of my keyframes are already set. So I did it over here on the media tab and then on the project tab, it brought in the way I, I framed everything. Or what I could do is I could reframe it here and I could set my keyframes and all that. And I'm going to drag this back to the beginning. So you see, I'm just clicking and holding this little dot. Um, but I'm going to go to this clip and what I want to do is I want to go ahead and set a keyframe and then I can do all of my reframing here. And the way that I do that is I, first of all, click on the clip. So say I was on this one, I want to click on this clip and this is my add keyframe. So very similar to what we were doing before. I'm going to going to go ahead and add the keyframe here and then I'll play it. And this is a really short clip. Let's say I just wanted to add another keyframe and pan. I want to pan down and I can play it. Okay, obviously super super short clip there, but let's see what that looks like. So you can see it just pans down. So again, that's just how you can do all of your reframing. You can trim your clip. So let's say, you know, we have this clip and we want to trim it. I want to. I can either click here and just move this over, okay, and then it'll it'll just push everything back over to the left. Or like we were doing before, I could trim it. So let's see. I'm I'm on this one clip and I want to trim it on the left, I can just click here and it'll trim it. Okay. So that, those are the basics. And then by the way, you can do like keyframe transitions over here. You can play around with these. Uh, this is how you do your deep track from here. This is how you do your views. Okay. So let's say I'm on this one. Let's go over here to this clip and I want to change my view. I'm going to do tiny, tiny planet. Uh, will it let me do it. Oh, I've already set it. So never mind. Um, but yeah, you can change your view. So like if I add a keyframe here, let's just try this. Um, let's click on this clip, add a keyframe and then change the view. Okay. So that's how you can change your view from right there. So I went to ultra from D warp to ultra on that keyframe. And then you can do like keyframe transitions. So the way keyframe transitions work, I don't really use them that much, but let's say I set a keyframe here and I'm going to play it along a little bit. 
and then I'll set another keyframe. Let's, let's pan down and then set a keyframe. Um, what I what you do is you put the the marker between the two keyframes and then you tap on whatever one. I don't really notice much of a difference there, but I'll show you what does make a difference. So let, let's say, let's play it back. Like I said, it, it just, it controls how it transitions to that. I usually just do no uh, transition there. I'm gonna show you a video transition and this is what you'll probably use the most if you're using this timeline, uh, this project mode in the in the app, which again, I don't use it. And the reason I don't do it is I can't layer a clip. Like I can't put another, another clip on top of another clip and I don't have near as much control over my audio and things like that just because I'm so used to using DaVinci Resolve. But if you if you just want an editor to put together videos, I mean, this this would be the way to go. But it, so up here, I was on media. I'm gonna tap on transitions and then I'm going to just find one that I like and drag it between the two clips. And you can see it does a pretty cool transition between the two. So that's it, that's all I wanna show you. Those are the basics of how to use the uh, Insta360 Studio. It's really useful. Uh, if you have an X5, X4, or whatever, 360 camera, it's crucial. And just to repeat, what I do is I just use this media tab I get the clip like I want it, I export an import MP4 file, and then I bring it into DaVinci Resolve, put them together and put together my video. So there you go. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and drop those below and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in cycling videos such as mountain biking and gravel. And I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.